We've been told that people have information that don't want to be involved, and, and that's a problem. Police say they want justice and answers for a grieving family, but silence isn't going to get those. As long as nobody's doing that, nobody's saying nothing, it's going to keep happening. It's going to be somebody else sitting here crying. Forty-three-year-old Joni Webb was kind, loving, and just an overall amazing person. The type of person to do anything for anyone. She had a passion for animals, enjoyed going out to play bingo, and loved spending time with her grandchildren, recently welcoming a granddaughter whom she absolutely adored. Joni fought two different types of cancers and beat them both. She was determined to live her life to the fullest while cherishing those around her and making a lasting impression on every single person she's ever met. Around 4.30 p.m. on November 4th, Muncie police responded to 818 South Monroe Street to reports of shots being fired, which quickly turned into a call for a report of a person being shot. Officers located a woman who was conscious and suffering from gunshot wounds inside of the home. Directly next door, police noticed what appeared to be a bullet hole in the exterior of the home and made entry locating a second victim who was also suffering from gunshot wounds. In Muncie, one woman is dead and another is in the hospital after being shot unintentionally in their homes. Police were called to South Monroe Street Friday and found a woman shot inside her home. Officers then went to a neighboring house and found a second woman shot. Both were taken to the hospital. The victims were identified as 43-year-old Joni Webb, who was taken by ambulance to IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital, where she later succumbed to her injuries, and her 37-year-old neighbor, who was taken to the hospital and listed in stable condition. A closer look into the investigation determined that Joni was struck with a stray bullet while sitting on her couch waiting for her ride to bingo. Evidence of nine bullet fragments were found inside of the neighbor's home, and it is believed that one of the bullets ricocheted off the home and entered Joni's home. Police said detectives do not believe either victim was an intended target in the shooting, calling it a senseless act of violence. They also stated they have identified multiple people connected to the case who are not talking. Neighbors, along with friends and family, are mourning the loss, searching for some sort of answers. Who did this? Why? They say it could have happened to anyone on their block. A small memorial was created and placed on Joni's front porch with a photo of her daughter hugging her. Flowers and teddy bears surround the frame. Family and friends, along with police, pleaded with the community to come forward with any information leading to justice. The hurt is just unbearable. 43-year-old Joni Webb was killed Friday afternoon, shot while sitting on her couch inside her home. Whatever you, they were trying to accomplish, was it really worth <laughs> That. The shooting on Monroe Street also left a second woman injured. Police say both victims were innocent bystanders. This is a tragic loss of life that was completely unnecessary and it just will not be tolerated. This home right next door was riddled with bullets. You can even see the damage down here on the brick wall right across from it. We could only find one single bullet hole on Webb's home. I'm not missing forever. <laughs> It was a stray bullet that claimed Webb's life, a life she fought so hard for. Family says Webb survived two types of cancer. She fought all that and she won. Are you just in your own home, in your own home. Kyra Hammond says Webb loved animals, bingo, and caring for others as a CNA. She welcomed a granddaughter just days before she was killed. She's just a loving person. She'll do anything for anybody. It could have been pretty much anybody on this block. Neighbors are mourning the loss of 43-year-old Joni Webb, shot by a stray bullet. Neighbors say she was sitting on her couch waiting for her ride to bingo. I was with her Thursday at bingo, and she asked me, was I going Friday? And then I go Friday, and then they come and tell me that she was gone. I'm going like, what? Police responded to a call of shots fired Friday before 5 p.m. at her next-door neighbor's home. Evidence of nine bullet fragments were found in that home, also injuring another woman. Neighbors believe one of those bullets ricocheted off the home and hit Webb's home. Sad to see her go like that. An especially sad situation as Webb had already beat cancer. Beat it twice. And this is the receiving that she get, you know. Muncie police were soon informed that a threatening message on Snapchat was apparently a factor in events that led to the two shootings. 
Early Tuesday, police arrested and charged 19-year-old Darnzel D'Antonio Drummer with preliminary murder, aggravated battery, and criminal recklessness. According to an affidavit, a Muncie man whose name was not released had been at the home at 818 South Monroe shortly before the gunfire. A photo of that man and his young daughter was taken at that location and then posted on Snapchat along with a threat to harm both the man and his child. The suspect, who was related to the target of the threat, reportedly told police that that posting prompted him to drive to the 800 block of South Monroe Street. He reported seeing a man crouch down outside of the home and said he fired six gunshots in that person's direction. Police reported several bullets struck that house. One entered the house where the 37-year-old woman was struck in the torso. That woman was taken to the hospital by ambulance, and police were investigating her shooting when a female reported she had been unable to reach her cousin, Joni Webb, at her home at 814 South Monroe. Investigators saw Joni, later determined to have been shot in the head, lying on the floor inside the residence. She was also taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. A bullet hole was found in a wall of her home. Drummer continued to be held without bond Wednesday in the Delaware County Jail. Initially, he had not been formally charged. Right now, MPD is asking anyone with doorbell or home surveillance cameras to review any footage from around the time of the crime on Friday and inform police if it's captured anything that may provide additional answers. The investigation remains ongoing.